um, I'm gonna have my painter come here and do all these walls and whiteboard. Because if you don't know me that well, you're gonna soon find out that I'm a whiteboard freak. Am I not, Tom? You are. So, because I'm always uh, trying to explain shit to people, and it's the best way where I can show up and show you something, you know what I mean, step by step. All right, so my, here's my commitment for you guys. Yeah, here's my commitment for you guys today. I'm gonna try to get you in and out of here in hopefully 30 to 40 minutes. Is that fair? So, um, we're gonna go through first call strategies on how to set more appointments with sellers. So for some people like Nick, you're prospecting every single day, and we talk about this every day, how do you set more appointments, right? And going on the right appointments, and that's exactly what I'm gonna walk you through step by step today. Sound fair? Right. So before I jump into it, um, I'm curious from your guys' standpoint, some of you have been in the business for a little while, some of you have been, people just started, which is fine, doesn't matter. Um, what are some daily, what I call vitals, of a real estate agent's business daily? Meaning this, meaning if you tore everything off that we do, we run around like crazy people doing a bunch of shit all day, right? But what are the absolute must do's in order to grow a sales business? Just start throwing them out. Contact. Okay, so make contacts. Lead gen. Okay. What else? Appointments, face to face. There you go. So set appointments. All these things are exactly right. Heather, what's another one? Uh, follow up. Yeah, exactly right. Follow up's a huge one. Brad, anything to anything to add? So follow up would be the biggest one. Yeah, that is probably the biggest one. So I've got two things on here. I've got eight. Okay, so let me walk you guys through what my eight are. You guys said a lot of them here. So in no order, uh, but I think that if you're going to succeed in business at a high level, that your fitness has to be somewhere in there on that list. Right, good or, good or bad, right or wrong, if you're going to succeed at a high, high level, and I use you as an example, last year, right, when you started to succeed in real estate at the highest level, your fitness was the most on point it had been your whole life, am I wrong? Right. Right. So they, 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 they really correlate a lot, okay? So, uh, what's up, Lisa? How you? Good, how's it going? Hop, squat, and join us. Um, so exercise, follow-up, setting appointments, making contacts, all those things are important. We're on negotiating contracts, right? Negotiating contracts. We have to do that at all, Heather? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so <laughs> you gotta do that all the time, right? And if you wanna get paid, you gotta do that. And then presenting is the other one. So if we look at the, the daily vitals, meaning these are the things, what's up, E? If these are the things that you're going to do to succeed in real estate at a high, high level, these are the things that have to happen. We all agree? Say yes. Yes. Okay. So the fuel. So if we say, okay, what's the actual fuel that feeds this machine? The answer is up here. Okay. And it's what we're here to talk about today. But in order to get paid at a high level, we have to do what? All the time. It's all right. If you don't know it, someone help her out. Set appointments. Set appointments. The appointments right here is the fuel, okay, that drives everything else, right? So you can be, here's what I say all the time, okay? And I'm not picking on anybody. This just is what it is. People get into real estate to be the practitioner, right? To show people homes, to open up the doors, write contracts. That's what they think of when they get that license. They say, okay, I'm going to be a practitioner. I'm going to sell some homes. Well, in order to sell some homes, we got to set appointments with a bunch of, a bunch of people or you're going to be a broke realtor. You guys agree? All right, so what I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step is how to set more appointments when prospecting. Is that fair? I think, Lisa, you do a lot of prospecting, correct? Yeah. Uh, very cool, no, you're good. All right, so let's go through it. So what is, um, Lisa, I'm gonna pick on you because yeah. it's our first time meeting and I gotta pick on you, okay? I gotta get you uncomfortable because that's what setting appointments is really all about. All right, so when we're prospecting, it doesn't matter if it's a buyer lead, seller lead, Zillow, friends, family, mom, dad, sister, brother, it doesn't matter. What are our first call goals? Lisa, give me one of them. First, get them to talk to you. Yep, make contact. Yeah. Right? So that's exactly right. So make contact. Nick, we just talked about this the other day. Determine motivation. Is it, you want to say it again? Determine motivation. Okay, that's exactly right. And how do you do that? Ask questions. That's exactly right. Okay. So after we've done that, what's another thing? We got timing. Okay. Yep. So timing is important for sure. Timing around what specifically? When they want to. When they want to do something. When they want to buy. Right. But what's so we're getting closer. 
But here's one thing that a lot of people that prospect in real estate, they make a huge mistake doing what? Looking for. Okay. But what's the goal? What's the outcome we're looking for? Ask for the appointment. Okay. You got it. Say it louder. Ask for the appointment. Ask for the appointment. You see, the problem is when, when people learn reverse selling or they learn how to prospect in general, they get so caught up in all these other things, which are important, but we need to ask for the appointment. Ask, well, that's supposed to be, yeah, we can do that. Um, if you don't ask, how many times do people come out and say, Lisa, you know, I'd love for you to just come out and share with me what you have to offer, and if, you have, if I like what I see, I'm gonna hire you. How often does that happen? I'll let you know when that happens. Yeah, zero. <laughs> it never, ever happens. Nothing happens unless we ask for the appointment. So we're, we're there, okay? There's a couple other things that we can do on the first call. So what happens if you don't get an appointment? Mark, I talked about this morning. Instead of hanging up the phone or leaving the networking event or whatever you're doing to prospect, what are you gonna do? Get another opportunity. We're generating a, a, lead. a lead. Let's generate a lead. So uh, generate a lead. Here's what agents across the world will do. And Mark, I'm just gonna pick on you because you prospected with me this morning. It was really good. So, so Mark, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so Mark has a great conversation with a consumer, a potential client that, I don't know, the commission may be a potential five, six, seven thousand dollar commission. Is that fair? Depending on where you were calling at? Yeah. Now, the conversation didn't go bad. The person wasn't like, you jerk, don't ever call me again. It was actually decent. And we call absentee owners, it's one of our lead sources. And the conversation was such that, uh, I forget what she said, but she said, you know, the house isn't for sale. That's what she said. Again, to Lisa's point, they're never gonna come out and say, yeah, you know what, I was planning on listing the home today. I'm so glad that you, you called me. That's never gonna happen in your whole career, believe me. So we have to generate a lead, okay? We're gonna talk about this and how to do this in just a second, okay? And then there's, there's uh, lastly, I'll just put on here, if you make contact, I forget who said this, I think Lisa, you said this, and you go through all of these different things and none of these things can happen, then lastly, Mark, you can do what you love to do. Yeah, just toss it. Just toss it, just delete it. If, if none of these things are, are happening, and fortune, to Brad's point, is made in the follow-up, so we have to generate a lead if we can before we delete it, but if you can't, then we're gonna, we, it's okay to delete those, okay? Mm -hmm. Question? Another question, more of a comment on that. Like, Please. I will go through a lot of times like the first time they're screaming at me, the second time I might get them to talk to me. Yeah. But like it can take a while. So even if I don't get an actual lead or actual appointment, I'll keep them in that database so they literally tell me not to call them. So that's great. And thank you for bringing that up. And, and so do I too. You know what I mean? You, you were asking me this morning, should I call again? Should I call again? For the most part, yeah, you should build a massive database of people. Unless like, dude, just stop. Just, I'm done. I'm good. Just stop. Go ahead. I was just like, today, for example, I had six calls and one text. I call the guy again and finally he says, yeah, it's listed for the Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. yeah. Yeah. at least you know the outcome and you know, then you can get rid of it. That's exactly right. And so um, when we're doing these activities, again, it doesn't matter about lead sources. Why do we have the resistance? Why don't people want to meet with you? Because you're a total stranger. Total stranger. So they don't know you, they don't trust you. That's exactly right. right. You could have also called at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I that's fair. I think we've all been there taking a random call you know, yeah. in the middle of something, and I don't want to talk to you. So I give the example all the time. I have to give it because it's just such a perfect example. Who in here has been to Grand Lakes Crossing Mall? Raise your hand. So you've been there, you've been there, you ever been there? Yeah. Oh, you have been there. Lisa, you ever been there? Okay, let me, let me, have you been there? So what is in the middle of the whole mall throughout the entire circle? What's in the middle? Jen? People trying to sell you crap. These, what are they called? They're kiosks, right? So here's what you would see if you went to Grand Lakes Crossing Mall. It's a huge circle, okay? You've driven past it a hundred times probably. Yeah, not a mall. Dude, you gotta get out more. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, so that's okay. So this is really crossing. It's like a circle or a U-shaped something, right? And in the middle, the whole thing pretty much are like these kiosks in the middle of the mall. And there are people sitting there. And this is how people walk through Grayley's Crossing. So uh, stand up for me real quick. So you and I are walking through the mall together and you can come over here and the kiosk is right there. Like, and then look at the wall, we go like this. Yeah, you know I mean? like, that's what, that's, that's how, that's yeah. what you're, so if you go there, 
tell me I'm wrong if you don't experience that. Yeah. But dude, we, it's the wrong time. It's just people are, they're not thinking about it. You are, for the most part, we're calling out of the blue. So there's some natural resistance there. And so what, what I teach is something called reverse selling. What you're going to learn today when you walk out of this room is how do I get past that reflex? Like, Ugh, I don't even want to look at you. You know what I mean? And that's what happens to all of us. Make sense? So let's get into the methodology on how to get past this reflex no so you can start setting these appointments. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to take notes, this will be a good time for that. And if not, this is going to be recorded in a couple of different ways, and I'll post it so you guys will have the recording. Okay? So, oh, you good? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So number one is trying to stay conversational. Stay conversational. Lisa, how can you do that in a world if you don't know what to say? What's one way that you told me on the phone that you want to do that you can get better and stay more conversational? Asking more questions. Okay. But there's something you could do before that. And not a lot of people do it. It's getting a what partner? Oh, a what partner. That's okay. right. So, so people in real estate, they think like, okay, I'm in the sales business. I understand I'm in sales. Uh, but they don't look at it as a craft. Okay. I look at my communication to get up here and communicate with you guys as a craft. I've done this talk, I don't know, 10,000 times. That's why it comes out okay, hopefully. Uh, but the whole point is, in order for you to stay conversation, I told Nick this the other day, remember that? When you were prospecting, you were saying the words. Like the words were coming out fine, but it sounded really what? Yeah, uh, not conversation, but robotic. Scripted. Scripted yeah. Why do people hate scripts? Jen, why do you hate scripts? <laughs> so the reason why Jen hates scripts, the reason why we all hate scripts, Ethan, is because we don't want to sound robotic. We don't want to sound scripted. Well, if you don't want to sound like that, if you actually mean it, Mark, you have to role play a lot. And so there are people in this room that don't want to sound robotic, and so that you should get a great role play partner, and you should take it seriously. What did you tell me on the phone? Every time you get a role play partner, what happens at about after the excitement goes away, ooh, we need a role play partner because I saw that Mike Ferry YouTube video and they said, I got to have a role play partner. This guy's making a million dollars. I'm making one dollar. I need a role play partner. They get one and two weeks after they get your role play partner, what do they do every time? They do not call. Bye, Felicia. They go dark because here's what I've been talking about all the time. Everyone loves talking about goals and the outcomes and the cars and all the stuff. But when it comes time to do the work, everybody goes fucking dark. Bye bye. Bye bye. I don't Tell want to roll play anymore. What happens is you end up talking about nothing. Yeah. Not you end up not role playing. <laughs> you end up talking about business, and before you know, it's half an hour. That's right. Because of a video I just made last week, creative avoidance. If I if if Nick is my role play partner, okay, the responsibility to say yes to that is massive, right? Because he's relying on me to have integrity during those role plays. Because otherwise, he wouldn't reach out, and, and he needs to do the same for me. So first recommendation, anytime you say to somebody, Jen, listen, I need help on my listing presentation. I do not want to commit malpractice. That's not for real. But I don't want to practice on my clients. I want to practice with Heather. I want to practice with Brad. So when I sit down in front of my seller, I don't sound like a complete robot, a complete idiot. That is the answer. And we've got to make peace with that. Okay, so that's number one. Any questions? Make sense? So there's a lot of talented people right in this room and inside of our company that aren't here today that you can hook up with and do that, okay? Number two is, this is really hard, is detaching from the outcome. If you see, what happens is when you're prospecting, we're looking for an immediate result. Every single one of you, and myself included, we're addicted to instant gratification. We want to do one thing. We want to pull out our credit card, give Zillow money, and they want to give us a lead, and we want to close it, we want to make money today. We want to make one phone call, get a listing, and get sold. It doesn't happen that way, Nick, does it? No. What is it, what's reality actually like? Yeah, that's probably going to take 100 calls for an appointment. That's right. That's right. And detaching from the outcome, you won't reach the ratios that I'm going to walk you through today unless you can be detached from the outcome. Because the second that somebody starts to smell, ooh, this sounds pretty salesy, Lisa, what do they do? They're going to give you more objections. Am I right or am I wrong? Don't hang, don't hang up. They don't want to hear the shit, right? They don't want to hear it. So you can't be detached from the outcome. So in the words I'm going to teach you today, 
if there was any magic in those words, you're going to hear them, but there is no magic in the words until you focus and, and they become second nature. Okay. So that's number two. Number three is removing the threat. So how do we do that? It's coming in just a second, but removing the threat. Number four is focusing on getting face to face. Here's a massive one. There are companies and there are trainers right now that are teaching you to, and we talk about this all the time. So if you've heard it, you just got to bear with me. They want you to make a phone call, Heather. This is a phone. Okay. Bear with me. They want you to go from phone call to, and this is a diamond ring. That's what they want you to do. We talked about this before. What am I talking about, Jen? What are they teaching us to do? Married. Yeah, like propose yeah. to the prospect. Let me give you an example. Ready? Here's what every single one of you have heard a thousand times. Mark, uh, I'm going to propose to you. It's going to be a little bit weird. Just, just yeah, bear okay. with me, all right? So, so here's what you are all taught, every single one of you. Whether you went through Bold at Keller Williams or you've been a Mike Ferry disciple or Tom Ferry, it doesn't matter. It's ring, ring, ring. And he says hello. hello. And you say something along the lines of, Mark, what I'd like to do is stop by, take a look at the house. And if you like what you see, and you like what I have to say, are you planning on listing your home with me when I see you tonight at three o'clock? Am I right? And what do they say every time? Hell no. That's right. They want us to get, at, get down on one knee, complete stranger to Lisa's point, and ask to put a ring on it, the first call. So don't get caught up in that. You were doing that the other day, remember? You're like, dude, I'm like, no, no, no. There's gotta be a step in between that, and that step is getting face to face. Does that make sense? You gotta get face to face, you gotta date, you gotta build a relationship before you put the ring on it. Make sense, Lisa? Okay, sure? Yeah, Okay, sweet. All right, so, and then number five is making it easy for the prospect to say yes. So you guys wanna learn how, how we do this, right? All right, let's do it, let's get into it. All right, so, um, hey Tom, behind you is a stack of some stuff. Can you grab me the stack of the stuff on the right? Look up, right there. Grab all those for me, please. It should be two pages. Can you take two and pass it down? And leave those alone. Those are going to come later. Grab two of those and pass it along. Where's my... Is that solidify? Still yep. right? Yep. Yeah, that's my guy right there. All right, everybody got some of those? All right, so step number one. You guys ready to start learning some stuff? Who's out there? Hey, Jimmy. Hi, Mary. You guys ready to start learning some stuff? Okay. Solidifying the prospect's position. Lisa, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is when you call a buyer, let's just, you've been working with a ton of buyers, right, Heather? What is a common thing that you hear, whether the lead comes from Zillow, Realtor.com, Billy Bob's Realty, what's a common thing a buyer will say when we prospect to them? They just started looking. That's exactly right. Does every agent in here, has ever heard that before? Say yes? Yeah. Okay, so, so solidifying the prospect's position means that you would come out of the gate saying that. Mm -hmm. Right? That's step one of reverse selling, is we already know they're going to say that. Okay? So as an example, you see some examples here. The example would be, listen, I know, Brad, you're selling the home on your own. That's an example of that. Heather, I understand that you're just getting started looking. Am I right? Yeah. Right? Imagine if you could start it off that way versus the prospect having to tell you that, and now you feel like you're in a position to do what? To what? That's right. You get on the defensive, you start becoming that person at the kiosk. Well, let me, let me just spray your hair with this stuff and make your hair real super soft. It's like, dude, oh, I don't want to hear that. So what if we come out of the gate? Remember the, the, uh, the example I gave at our last training? Uh, imagine if someone at that kiosk had the sign. Remember what I said? It would say, don't look over here. Don't stop here. This is step one in setting more appointments solidify the prospect's position that you already know exists. What do you prospect? What kind of leads do you prospect? Expires. What does expires tell you almost every single day when you call them? What do they say? We're not selling. We already know they're going to say that. So why don't you just say, listen, I know you're probably, Lisa, right now, not moving. Am I right? Wow, it's a fucking agent that actually gets it. I've had to tell every single agent, all these Nick Ottbachers that keep calling me, I've got to keep telling them this. This agent comes out of the gate, listen, hey, it's Lisa with Keller Williams, and Tom, listen, I know you're probably not moving right now. Am I right? Does it start off the conversation differently? 
A hundred percent. Okay, so that is step one. You guys with me? What questions, Ethan? What's another example on on step one? I gave you, I don't know, four or five on there. Well, this agrees to not believe it. That's right. Say it. Say it louder. Let's agree to not do anything right now. Heather, let's agree to not do anything right now. This is solidifying the prospect's position. You guys with me? All right. Step number two, Heather, what is it? Is it this one? Yep. Statement, statement of value. You got it. Statement of value. All right. So, Lisa, give me an example. What's A? Just read it for now. I'll stop by one day, share some information that will ensure you get top dollar for your home. Okay, so that's an example, okay? So step one, solidifying the prospect's position. Step two is a statement of value. Tom, what's another one? <clears throat> Read B. B, I'll share, I'll share some new information that will cause your home to actually sell. And then, Jen, give me number C. Regardless if you hire me, I'll walk Okay, so those are some examples. Now, at the end of this, you guys aren't getting off the hook. At the end of this, you guys are all going to practice this, so make sure you pay attention, okay? <laughs> and this is the room to screw it all up. We'd rather practice in here than go practice on the street and seem dumb. Would, would you guys agree with that? Yeah. At least for me, like, I'd rather sound dumb in front of you guys so that I have a chance to sound okay in front of a prospect that's going to pay me 10 grand. Would you guys yeah. agree? All right, so um, so that's statement of value. Now, step number three, Mark, what's it say? Step number three is remove the threat of saying yes to me. Okay, so they don't they want to tell you it's a two-letter word. You guys hear it hopefully 30, 40, 50 times a day, Mark, and what is it? It's uh, because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense, right? Yeah, so that's what it sounds like, but what's the two-letter word that you hear all the time? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you hear this all day long. I mean, I hear it all the time. Yeah, you hear it all the time. So do you want more yeses or do you want to keep hearing no's? You want more yeses. Okay, so how do we do that? Step number three is what? Remove the threat. Remove the threat. And Mark, how do we do that? Say it one more time. Say, uh, because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense, right? That's right. So that's one example of how we remove the threat, Nick. So as you're prospecting, making 80 contacts in a day, if you simply – Go solidify their position, statement of value, and remove the threat. Because listen, Nick, at the end of the day, if we get together, you're not going to do anything unless it makes all the sense in the world. I mean, am I right? Right. And that's what they say every single time. That's an example of removing the threat. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, Ethan, there's a couple more on there. Give me some more examples of those. Uh, you can decide what makes the most sense. That's one of my favorite ones. Jen, let's do this. Let's get together this weekend. I'll share some options that might make sense. At the end of the day, listen, you and your husband can decide what makes sense or not. Is that fair? Okay. It's hard to say no. It's very reasonable talk pass. Very reasonable. Okay. All right. What's step number four, uh, Jen Tate? Gain agreement. Gain agreement. Mark, did we talk about this this morning? Oh, we sure did. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Look at him. He's learning. And so if we don't gain agreement, what happens on the phone? No, they, they, there's either a pregnant pause or they're that's waiting for you to say Yeah, something. it's very weird. It'd be like this, right? It'd be like. You just go sit there. That's, you just go sit there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's like, Brad, uh, you know, I'm going to go to lunch today. And then it's like nothing. Like, okay. Like, Brad's like, shit, do I, do I say something? Like, what do I do here? Yeah, like, what do you, do you want me to go with you? Or are you just telling me? You know what I mean? So, like, that's kind of how it was in that call. Like, damn, dude, do something. Say something. You know what I mean? So, gaining agreement. You guys hear This is like my, this is how I communicate now, isn't it, Ethan? All the time. So, wouldn't you agree? Fair enough. Makes sense, right? Is that reasonable? And we always end with a what at the end? Upswing. 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 So what's it? Did you say that? Yeah. Good job. Yeah, we just met. How do you know all this? Okay, what's a downswing? I'm making a statement. Wow! Give her a round of applause. Like I haven't. <laughs> so that's really good. I gotta tell you, of all the people I've trained, it's probably close to 2,000. That's really good that you've been able to do that right off the rip. Okay. So when you gain agreement, because we want someone to say yes, you have to do an upswing. Mark, makes sense. Yep. Fair enough. Is that reasonable? Right? A statement, you hear that subtle when I go down like that? Again, I'm going to teach you guys to be sales ninjas, so you got to listen. 
down. You make sense? All right. Number five, Lisa said at the beginning of the training, Lisa said it one more time for us. Oh, uh, what did I say? You <laughs> said something cool. Ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah, ask me the appointment. There you go. You knew you were going to do it. I just, I couldn't see through you, so I wasn't sure where. There you go. Number five is asking for the appointment. These are the five steps on how to set more appointments. That's how you do it, okay? So let me give you guys an example. You can add this on any script, any lead source, buyer or seller, open house, mom or dad, okay? Here's what it will sound like. So Tom, listen, I know you're selling the home on your own, which makes sense. I'd like to stop by one day, see the home, and Tom, when I'm there, I'll share with you our for sale by owner backup strategy that will cause the home to sell. Because listen, you're not gonna do anything unless it makes sense, am I right? Right. That's the whole thing. You just saw me go slow, step by step by step, okay? Mark, let me hear you go through it. Okay. Um, so, so, so just read it so that you can get the flow of it, okay? And then we're gonna practice it in just a second. Okay. So I've given you a full example on page two, putting it all together, you're gonna do the exact same thing I just did. Okay, okay, I know you're selling your home on your own. I, I get that. It makes sense, right? Yep. Okay. So just read it because you're going to well, do what I'd you want like to do. I'd like to stop one day uh, to see the home, and when I'm there, I'll share with you my for sale by owner toolkit, um, and uh, which will cause your home to actually sell in the event you can't sell your home because. Brandon. Yeah, because you're Brandon, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense, right? Right. Good job. Give a round of applause. Okay. So, but I use a different script now. Well, of I'm course. Not, I moved down to three. Yeah, you can use whatever you script you want. Like I said, that, that's less important. I don't care what you say. You're going to, listen, the, when I teach you a strategy, you're you. I'm me. You're you. I'm me. You're going to hear me say that all the time. What do I mean by that? Nick, what do I mean by when I say that to somebody? Yeah, you're going to put your own player on. That's it. So I don't care about the words, I care about the process. So in these trainings, I give you stuff to just outline it so you can flow well with it. You can put your own flair on it, you should do that. After this training, you should write out your own words a thousand times, use it with your role play partners so you can sound not scripted, all right? Tom, give it a shot. And just again, I gave you the words for now just so you can get through it. To set an appointment to generate a lead. <laughs> That's great. All right. Putting it all together. Start with number one. So, Brandon, you're probably not moving right now. Oh, just go on page two, the same thing Mark no, just did. Right. I'm sorry. See, so yeah. that's what happens if you don't pay attention. I'm paying attention. I'm putting it all together. Down no, down. you're starting from the how? From the one. Just from number one. one. You could just. I just did it right Oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, so you want me to read? Yeah, read, just, read, just give read, it a shot. Give it a shot. Read this one, not piecemeal. Yeah, yeah, just give it a shot because when we're done with Tom's done with this, we're going to break off in groups of two, and you guys are all going to go through these. We're going to see how many reps we can get. And I've given you examples. I gave you the answers to the test, Jen. Don't worry. But I just want to give you one example. Now, go slow because you're just going to walk through these five steps. Go ahead. I know you're selling the home on your own, which makes sense. I'd like to stop by one day to see the home, but when I'm there, I'll share with you our sale owner backup plan, which will cause the home to actually sell in the event you can't sell the home. Because Brandon, you're not gonna do anything unless it makes sense, right? Boom, nice job, that's exactly right. All right, so now you can reach behind you, Tom, and grab those pieces of paper. I've given you some examples. Now, leaving today, these are my words. So they come off your tongue a little bit weird, like how they're read and where my pauses are at. Uh, but I'm going to give you a couple more examples before we split up into two, we have two, four, six. We have eight people. That's perfect. So let me see one of these. Thank you. There you go, Lisa. So all I want us to do for like literally the next five to seven minutes, we're, we're going to pair up and then we'll switch. We'll pair up and we'll switch. I just want to get as many reps as we possibly can so that you leave here getting better than when you walked in the room. Ethan, is that fair? Yeah. What did I just do? Gain agreement, baby, right? Gain agreement. All right, so if I'm role playing with Ethan, all we're gonna do, we're not gonna talk about lunch and how was that salad. We're gonna go back and forth. So come here, Ethan, real quick. Come on up here. So we're gonna break off into twos and we're just gonna rep this thing rapid fire, right? 
So let me, I'm going to go first. So Ethan, sounds good. Before I let you go, I was just curious, is there anything uh, that you would consider doing outside of that? See how, what happens if you don't read it well? <laughs> That's right. So when we meet, I'll show you new information for you to consider, and then you can decide what makes the most sense. Fair enough? Go. Because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense, right? Because you're not going to do anything, and that's how you're going to do, okay? So we're going to break up into two. I gave you the answers. If, Jen, you want to create your own words, you can try it. All I care about is you getting through this methodology as much as possible before you leave this room, okay? Because if you don't, and I just come up here and preach to you, if you listen, great, but if you're not going to retain it unless you do it, okay? So we're going to split up just two. You two go in this corner. You two in that back corner. You two in that back corner. You two in this corner. Okay, ready? Yeah, I would. I would start off with that. When you leave here, you can start. You can do your own thing. Yeah, are we going to back to You want us to go through all of them? Uh, as many as you can. In the next two or three minutes. Okay, we're going to switch it up. Go ahead. Sounds good. So just move. So Jen over, Heather over with Mark, Lisa oh. over with Tom, Nick over with Ethan. Oh, okay. 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 Go ahead. Nice. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 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 But sure, we even consider what we do next. Good job, great tonality. All right, so I need some brave, brave souls. I need uh, three brave souls. Do I have any? Oh, here? Yeah, Lisa's gonna be brave, Nick's gonna be brave. All right, so all I want you to do is pick your favorite appointment setting script, Nick. You're gonna come up here and you're gonna just role play it out loud, and I'll be, in, there's no objections. Come on up in the front, and I want you to just use your favorite one, and I want you to deliver it with absolute conviction. Like, they would be dumb not to meet with you, all right? So whatever your favorite one is, you're just gonna deliver that to us with conviction, perfect. So Lisa, regardless if you decide to sell your home now or in the future, I'll stop by and share new information that would cause your home to actually sell, and from there you can decide what makes the most sense. Is that unreasonable? Nice! <laughs> Dude, that was, that, was, that was awesome. So that's my favorite one. So, so it's funny that you picked that one because that's my favorite one. Uh, because it's very difficult for a prospect to say, no, I mean, that's pretty reasonable. The way he's communicating that, like that was a hell of a job. And have you done that before? 
That one? Uh, no, I just kind of picked it up, but it's the next one. I like the unreasonable. Yeah, so is that unreasonable? And you plug their name in. Remember in school when they're like, Brad, and they look up like that? So they do the same thing, Tom. You know what I mean? They do it every time when they're on the phone, too. That's why you want to drop those subtle first names in there. That was a hell of a job, dude. All right, Lisa, pick your favorite one and deliver it to I don't know if it was my favorite one, but I haven't really studied them all. But we'll That's all right. For... All right. So let's do this. I'll stop by one day and give you some recommendations for you to consider, and then we can discuss what makes the most sense for you moving forward. Does that sound reasonable? Awesome job. That's hell of a job. Give a round of applause. Nice job. All right. So uh, let me just, I'm going to answer some questions. We're going to get you guys out of here. So Heather, why do we solidify the prospect's position? In your opinion, like why do we do that? Why is it important? Because we want to make sure that it's worth, they're going to sell. Okay. What else? That's not wrong. You're aligning with them. That's exactly right. Oh. So when you are calling these leads, they're constantly giving you resistance, constantly. Just like, you know, every time that person wants to sell you some nail polish at Great Lakes, what do you say every time? No. Every time. <laughs> so, so if they were to like, it, again, so solidifying the position, what if they came up to you honestly and they're like, listen, I know you're not going to buy this, but let me get your feedback on this really quick. It may change something a little bit, right? That's right. I mean, so, so that's what that's what solidifying the prospect's uh, position means. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Ethan, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. But, but that's what it means. All right. So, Ethan, let me ask you. Number two, statement of value. You don't have to give me an example, but like, what are we trying to convey here? That's right. And this right here is giving them the reason why to meet with us. Okay. So you'll hear me say things and don't get caught up too literal. Like, like my line where I say, um, listen, Lisa, I'll share with you some new, this is what I say to expires every time. Let me, I'll stop by. I'll share some new information that'll cause the home to actually sell. People always ask me, well, what's the new information? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't get caught up in that piece. Now, when I'm there, if you've never seen my CMA pricing presentation, which I think, Nick, you spent a little bit of time learning that, right? It's a different presentation than they're used to. But that is, if you have that question, that's what I say, okay? So, Lisa, removing the threat. Now, that's what you learned today, pretty much, is how to do this. But, like, from what you know today versus what you hopefully know now, Help me understand what your takeaway is from removing the threat. What are we trying to do? So that it's okay if you don't hire me. That's right. You, it, this is how we detach from the outcome. So when I say detach from the outcome, this is the how. Like saying things like, Mark, listen, regardless if you decide to hire me or not, I'm not concerned about that. All I'm concerned with, Heather, is getting you the truth. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Dude, it's really hard for a human being to say no to that because you're removing the threat. Okay, most agents are just after that listing, they're after that proposal, they just want to put the ring on it, you know what I mean? And if the person's like, no, I'm not going to marry you on the first date, they don't go, okay? <laughs> Gaining agreement, Mark, so talk to us, what do you got? Why do we do this? So you can move forward. That's right, because yeah. if you don't, it's going to be a lot of pauses and weird communication, all right? And then Brad, what, why do we have to ask for the appointment? If you don't ask, you won't get it. That's so simple, if you don't ask, you're gonna be stuck in contact itis, just calling and calling and calling. Nobody, and I think somebody said at the beginning of this, no one's just gonna come out and just give you the appointment. You have to ask for the appointment. Make sense? All right, it is 1.45. What questions do you guys have? Did I follow through on my, my, my uh, promise? You're good. Sweet. The original promise, so. <laughs> oh yeah, so 45 minutes or less. Yeah. So, what'd you learn? Um, Nothing. Brad, what'd you learn? <laughs> Anything? Yeah, cut them off at the pass so they don't have to uh, so overcome can. objections. Yeah. Jen, any takeaways? Yeah. All of it. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Any last questions? So listen, these are every single Monday at 1 o'clock. Different topics, different things that we're touching base on. So you can just put this on your calendar if you guys want to come back. It doesn't matter if you're in our company or outside of our company. That is doesn't matter. Every, uh, every Monday, 1 o'clock. Same place, well maybe not the same place as we grow, we've got some space next door. We're gonna be working on our skill set. Is this helpful at all for you guys? Yeah. That's right. Sweet, awesome. So that's what I got for you guys today. Thanks for coming. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, good job. Thank you. Lisa, good to see you. Yes, definitely, nice to meet you. See you, Jimmy. You wanna catch up?
Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah.